Today in Review This Thing, we're gonna review this thing, the LidCam Plus Pro. Everybody these days is wanting to record their hunting, shooting, outdoor adventures, and we are no different. We've definitely done a little bit of that. We also have a review of another point of view camera, but you can check that link out below too. So when I saw this LidCam Plus, I wanted to give it a try, mainly because this camera is gonna continue to film what you're looking at because you have it on your hat. We were able to use this quite a bit during turkey season. We've also taken it fishing and shooting and just doing a few other things. So let's review this thing. You know how it goes, we're gonna cover the facts. First part is fit. So fit is actually pretty easy to answer because if you have a hat with a bill, it's gonna fit. One thing I do wanna mention here though is that you wanna make sure the bill of your hat is pretty firm. I have another hat I tried it on that's a bit of a lightweight hat that has a not quite a firm a bill and I kept having to push it up so that it didn't feel uncomfortable pulling down on my face. So fit is actually a pretty easy question to answer. If you got a hat, it's gonna fit. So fit, five out of five. Now is the LidCam Plus Pro as advertised? This section is gonna be a little bit long, so just stick with me. The first thing to advertise is that it has a wide angle lens to keep everything in view. In this video, you can definitely see that 120 degree angle and tell that it's pretty much everything I was able to see. The good thing with that is that you can see things that are close to you in the picture. It's not gonna be cut out because it's too close. The only downside to that wide angle view is that it doesn't necessarily give you a really clear picture of the things that are further away. And we'll talk about that a little bit more coming up. Which leads to the next thing they advertise, which is 1080p recording. You can see from these fishing and shooting videos that footage is really clear when the objects are close, like within 15 to 20 yards, and especially when it's a sunny day and there's a lot of light. But when objects are further away, it's definitely not as clear. This hen was probably about 80 yards away in this video, and you can obviously see very little detail in her. This turkey was about 35 yards away and you really can't see any significant details in it. I will mention here though, it was also first thing in the morning, so there wasn't a ton of light, which also contributes to that lack of clarity of picture, but that's also very common with any camera, really. In these couple of videos, you can see the quality of the low light video. Early morning, the footage is gonna be a lot grainier because there's not as much light. And again, that's pretty common in any camera that isn't extremely expensive. So they have a camo and a black one. This version, the black one, has a one to four X zoom. Now it is a digital zoom, so the zoomed footage footage isn't as clear as the wide angle, but it's still pretty decent. This footage, we were in the woods, so there wasn't a lot of light, so it's gonna make the footage a little bit grainier. The cool thing here is that these turkeys were about eight yards away when I took this video. And obviously at eight yards, zoomed into 4X, you can definitely see them clearly. In this video, we also had some deer come in, and I'm guessing they were probably about 40 yards away, and you can see them just across the top of this video. I do wish that I had an opportunity at a turkey at that like 30 to 35 range in 4X, so I could see the difference there, but it just wasn't meant to be. So one downside to the 4X zoom is that when things are pretty close to you, it makes them look weird. You can see that in this fishing video. It just looks weird not being able to see the whole picture, but just being zoomed in. So that's more just a function of getting used to your camera and knowing when to use which setting. They also advertise high quality audio and wind noise reduction. I was impressed with how much audio the microphone on this device actually does pick up. It got me whispering. I'm not saying. He's like, saying. In this video, you can hear me trying to control my breathing. And it was also in this video able to pick up gobbles from these jakes. Now audio is not necessarily production quality. It's not as good as a professional microphone or a fancy DSLR or something like that. But for the purpose that we wanted it for, the audio is plenty good enough. Now as far as wind noise, I didn't use this camera in a whole lot of wind. But in this video, I'm running, and obviously that creates wind, and you can hear what that sounds like. And finally, they advertise up to three hours of recording and eight hours of standby time. Now, one thing I wanna mention here is that whenever the camera is in standby mode, which basically means you've turned it on, but you haven't started recording, after about 20 minutes, it cuts off. So keep that in mind. If you have it in standby mode and you, you think some action's about to come, just check and make sure that it actually is still on. So I did a couple of tests. First test, I turned it on standby mode and just let it run. After it shut off, I turned it back on. The battery lasted about two and a half to three hours. So we definitely didn't get that eight hours of standby time. Then I recharged it, which took about two and a half hours and then just hit record and let it run till the battery died again. And in that test, it recorded for just over two hours before the battery died. Now I'm gonna talk about the battery a little bit more in construction and durability, so stay tuned for that. But just know it does not quite meet the advertised three hours of record time and eight hours of standby time. Now for as advertised, I'm gonna have to take some points off. The battery doesn't last as long for recording or in standby mode. And that 1080p quality video is primarily there whenever it's a nice sunny day. So because of those things, we're gonna give as advertised a 3.8 out of five. Now into construction 
construction and durability. The first thing I want to talk about are some things I really like about the construction of the LidCam Plus Pro. So first of all, the clamps on this camera are very strong. Once you get this thing on the bill of your cap, it is not coming off accidentally. And the nice thing about the fact that it is a lid cam is that you don't have to have other mounts to go with it. Another nice feature are the two LED lights. You can just use this as your headlamp, maybe walking into the woods or walking out at night. The power button and the record button are easy to find and easy to use. To turn it on, you just hold the power button down for about three seconds. To record, you just tap that record button to pause recording hit it again. When you're ready to turn it off, you just hold that button down for three to five seconds again, let it go, and it turns off. Another feature of, I guess, construction I like is the fact that it only records in five minute segments. So instead of having maybe one 45 minute long video, you have nine five minute long videos, which I really like because it makes editing and downloading a whole lot easier. So the battery is basically 3.7 volt lithium ion action cam battery is removable. And I found a three pack of those on Amazon for 20 bucks. Now caveat, I haven't tested that exact battery, but we had some other action cam batteries and we put that in there and it worked great. Now for some possible improvements to the camera. First, it only weighs 3.1 ounces, so it is not heavy, but when you have it on the front of your cap, it can definitely feel just a little bit heavy at times. Because of that, you can sometimes feel like the bill of your hat is coming down and you keep having to move it, or you have to tighten it up quite a bit to keep it from moving around. Now I mentioned that those LED lights were kind of a nice feature, but I just wonder if they took those lights out, if they may be able to make it a little bit more slimline as well as lighter. Another thing you want to think about is placement of the camera on your hat. If you're wearing it in the center, that works perfectly for maybe like fishing, shooting, pistols, things like that. But if you're bow hunting or you're going to be using a shotgun, then you want to probably change position. In this video, my husband was wearing it directly in the middle, and you can see that it doesn't necessarily get a great picture of the target. So he turned his hat a little bit, moved it over to the side, and this is the view that you get whenever you do that. Now let's say you were wanting to wear it turkey hunting like I did. If you have it in the middle of your hat, then the view is going to look a lot like this. So I had actually prepared and moved the camera and the hat off to the side whenever I took this video. And you can see that it looks much better and it actually looks pretty square on the target the whole time. Another aspect of construction I want to talk about real quick is the app. The app is actually pretty easy to use. You just turn your camera on and push that Wi-Fi button. And whenever that top button starts flashing, you know you're ready. Go to the Wi-Fi settings, select the one that starts with a D, and then go back to the app. From the app, you can see a live view of what the camera is seeing. You can also adjust the settings through the app, including resolution and white balance. And you can also control the camera through the app, including recording, stopping, taking pictures, things like that. Now keep in mind, if you're connected through Wi-Fi, you can no longer control the camera from the camera, only from your phone. And it's easy enough to disconnect. You just hit that Wi-Fi button again, and then you have control back through your camera. In the app, you can also look at the footage that you've recorded. One kind of downside is that it does do quite a bit of buffering, so that can be annoying because it takes a little bit of time to get through your video. One thing I found is that instead of trying to watch it through the app, I just download the video to my phone, which also takes some time, especially if you don't have great service. But once it's on your phone, you can watch it all the way through without any buffering. And as I mentioned before, this is where those five minute videos makes a big difference because it's a lot faster to download a five minute video than a 10, 20, 30 minute long video. And I'm going to talk about durability for just a minute. We've only had this camera this year, so I can't talk to long-term durability, but I can tell you that we have dropped this thing so many times and it's still working great. So overall, pretty happy with construction and durability. There are obviously some things that could be a little better, but some things are great. So we're going to give that score a 4.5 out of 5. Now onto testimonials and reviews. You know what we do? I want to tell you the complaints people had from the one and two star reviews. A number of people said they never could get theirs to turn on, so they returned them. A few people mentioned that the far off video wasn't good. I've shown you a couple of examples of that, so you can use that to determine what good really is for you. A few people said they couldn't get the zoom to work, which again, we haven't had any trouble with that. A few people said the sound is no good. We talked about that already. A few people said it's too heavy. We've also talked about that. And a number of people have said the battery doesn't last as long as they say it should, which we have also talked about that. Overall, the LidCam Plus Pro gets pretty good reviews. So I'm going to tell you the score we found, which is 3.8 out of 5. And finally, should you buy this thing? As with everything, it depends on what you're looking for and what you want this camera to do. The LidCam Plus Pro films in 1080p, not in 4K. So if you're looking for a 4K camera, you're not going to want to get this one. And remember, if you're trying to make high quality videos for, say, a YouTube channel, then this is just going to be one tool in your toolbox. And that's also true for any of those action cams or point of view cameras out there. But if you're just looking for a camera that's easy to use, easy to mount, and you can get good footage of your outdoor activities, then this may be just what you're looking for. One thing I really liked about it was after I killed that turkey, being able to just capture those few minutes right after that turkey kill and get that excitement. Now, are there other action cameras out there that are going to give you higher quality video, maybe better quality audio? I'm sure there are, but this camera does a really good job. And now here's the best part. The LidCam Plus Pro retails for one 
$169.99. But if you go to their website, then right now they're on sale for $99.99. So I think for $100, it's a really good deal. You're gonna get a good little camera that's easy to use, that's gonna get you good footage. So, should you buy this thing? 4.3 out of five. Hey, thanks for watching our LidCam Plus Pro video review. While you're here, watch a whole bunch of other videos. We got a lot of great stuff. Give us a thumbs up if you like what we do. If you really like it and you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe. And take a second and follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and now on TikTok.